the Lord has spoken to us this week. Amen. We were out on vacation, but I was praying to the Lord to speak to me, to give me some fresh manna from heaven. And I believe the Lord has spoken, and I want to share it with you this morning in the Gospel of Mark, chapter 5. Will you stand to your feet for the reading of God's Word? Mark, chapter 5, verse 27. The Bible says, when she had heard of Jesus... Now, this is speaking of the woman with the issue of blood. Very familiar scripture to you that, that know the Bible. This woman had spent everything she had trying to solve her issue, trying to bring healing into her life. Uh, for uh, many years, I believe 12 long years, she suffered with many things, and, and she went to many physicians. She spent all she had. But the Bible says when she had heard of Jesus, she came in the press behind and touched his garment. Somebody said she came in the press. Amen. 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 She, in other words, she pressed in. She pressed in to touch his garment. And then we read in Philippians Gospel, chapter 3. Chapter 3, verse 13. Apostle Paul says, Brethren, I count not myself to have apprehended, but this one thing I do is forgetting those things which are behind me yes. and reaching forth, there's another action word, reaching forth unto those things which are before me. He said, I press toward the mark. Somebody say, I press on I this press. morning. I press. Come on, I press on. you got to say it like you believe it. I Amen. Press. I press press on toward the mark for the prize of the high calling of God in Christ Jesus. I want you to put your finger on that word and let us pray today. Heavenly Father, we bless your name. God, we thank you for this day, for this is your day that you have made, and we rejoice in it today, Father. We thank you, God, for all that you have done, for all that you're going to do today, Father. And I pray today, God, you prepare our ears to hear, our hearts to receive your word today. In Jesus' mighty name, amen and amen. You may be seated if you can. Amen. We want to remember all of those that were affected in the tornadoes in the, uh, the northern states, uh, our state of Kentucky, Melissa and I. Uh, I talked with my family, and, and they did suffer a little bit of wind damage, but uh, no one was hurt. And we thank the Lord for his mercy. We want to lift up all those that have lost their lives, and we pray for them. And we pray the Holy Spirit will comfort them. Amen. 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 Um, as we read these scriptures today, uh, both scriptures deal with one thought. And the thought came to me this, this week that in order uh, for you to get what you want in this life, in order to get what you desire in this life, you've got to put forth some effort. Yeah. Come on now. Yeah. Come on. You've got to put a little bit of effort. You know, you've got to reach out and you've got to press. You've got to be willing to go against the current. My dad used to say you've got to give a little bit of old-fashioned gumption about you, you know. you got to do. you got to be a doer of the word. I mean, you've got to be those one that will go out and roll your sleeves up. You've got to have that gumption. I've talked to you many times about the kingdom of God, about there's only one way to go in the kingdom of God, and that is forward. That's not backwards. Amen. That's forward. And in order for us to go forward into the kingdom of God, you've got to be willing to give it your all. Are you willing, friend? You've got to be willing to give it your all. You've got to be willing to move in a pressing way. You've got to be willing to press in, to press on, and to press through. And sometimes in life, you've got to get a little bit of aggressiveness to you. Come on now. There's too many weak and passive Christians nowadays. Yeah. You've got to get a little bit of aggression about you when it comes to the things of God. Jesus said from the days of John and the Baptist until now, the kingdom of, of heaven suffers violence and the violent take it by force. And what he was saying is that the ones that win in life are the ones that are willing to press. The ones that really win in life are the ones that are willing to fight for what they want. Are you willing to fight for your children? Are you willing to fight for your grandchildren? Are you willing to fight for your family? Husband, are you willing to fight for your wife? Wife, are you willing to fight for your husband? Friend, it's time that we roll our sleeves up. Amen. We go back to the basics of life. The B-I-B-L-D. That's the book for me. And we fight for what we believe in. And we stand upon the word of God. Hallelujah. Amen. What Jesus was saying that, that when, when it comes to winning in life, those that win in life are those that are willing to press, to press in. Think about David and Goliath. When, the, when Goliath came and he defiled 
of the armies of Israel, David spoke of in 1 Samuel chapter 17. And David said to Saul, let no man's heart fail thee because of this uncircumcised giant. He said, let nobody fail, Saul. Amen. He said, let me go in, amen, and fight this Philistine. Amen. David was a small Rudy of a man, but he didn't let size matter. All he looked at was a big target. He said, how can I not miss this man? He said, I'll go in and get that man, friend. I'm here to tell you. He said, I'll go in and fight. I like one, sir. Uh, one, one version said, I'll go in. I'll make war. I'll do battle. I'll go in and I'll overcome. One version said, Pastor, I looked at one version. He said that David said he'll go in and he'll use him as food. <laughs> I thought about Joshua and Caleb. How they faced their giant in the promised land. Everyone said, we can't do it. We can't go in. They're too big. We're too small. We can't win. But not Joshua and Caleb. They said, we are well able. We need to understand, friend, that we are well able through Christ Jesus. Yeah. It's time that we, the children of the Most High God, get an understanding of us to what it means to press in. We need to get a determination that we won't back down, that we won't give in to the intimidation of the enemy, that we won't surrender to his tactics, nor his, his will be done. It's God's will be done, friend. Listen, we will not give in to his pressure. We're not going to give in to the things that he tries to bring in our family but what we are going to stand on is the promises of God where God promised you life an abundant life to live he promised that you shall not be hurt that you shall go through the fires that you shall go through the waters friend we need to give uh, we need to not give in to the enemy but give in to the will of God Amen. hallelujah amen well able press in press in amen we need to understand that we need to get a determination about us. Now, you know, we were gone this week, and one thing I found out is that there are a lot of different people when you get them on a ship. <laughs> <laughs> a lot of the things was not for me and Melissa. It just wasn't for us. We spent a lot of time just eating. <laughs> We, you know, we went to we'd check out the show. We realized that, that show wasn't for us, so we left politely, sat in the back and left and went and ate. <laughs> and, you know, and, but we realized, and I, as I watched her, you know, when I go to the mall with her, I sit around and I, I sit on the, 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 those nice, comfortable chairs out there, and I just watch people while she goes and shops. I like to watch people. And that's what I did kind of on the ship. And I understood this, that there are many, many different types of of people. And, and, I, and I was praying, you know, to myself, and I was there, and I was just sitting there, and, and I was just kind of just, you know, meditating upon the Lord. And I said, Lord, you must have a good sense of humor. <laughs> you created some of us, Lord. You must be, oh, you, you're hilarious, Lord, but you created some of us. My goodness. And the Lord began to speak to me that there are many types, even in the church body. There's many types. And then as I begin to pray about it this week, the Lord spoke to me about two types of Christians that are in the body of Christ. And you have those that are proactive and you have those that are reactive. In other words, you have those that get into the press and you have those that react to the press. You have those that take the fight to the giants and you have those that respond to the giants fury. You have those that will go in and collect the honey, and you have those that deal with the bees. Come on now, you know what I'm saying. And I have come to the conclusion that many of God's people live in the reactive. Yes. Yes. They're always on the defensive side, reacting to the attack of the enemy. They're always reacting to the aftermath of the battle, the aftermath of the storm. They sit back, friend, and they wait to see what the enemy's going to do next. And this is not the position of the Word of God. This is not the position of our life, friend. We ought to take the battle to the enemy, friend. We are the head and not the tail. Amen. This is not the position that we sit back and we do nothing. He called you out of the reactive to live in the proactive. He has called you to press. He's called you to press, P-R-E-S-S, -S, not to be depressed or be oppressed or be stressed. He called you to press. Friend, listen to me. We live in a society where there's too many reactive people. 
when you think about the great Apostle Paul and the greatness that he had. He, he was great because he lived in the proactive. His entire ministry was won on the front lines yeah. by pushing into the enemy's territory by fighting for what he believed. He was always talking about uh, being the light to the darkness. He brought the fight to the battle. He talked about the good fight and running the race and, and finishing his course. He said in Ephesians 6, uh, verse 10, Finally, my brethren, be strong in the Lord and the power of his might. Put on the whole armor of God that you may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. For we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against rulers in this darkness world, against spiritual wickedness in, in, in high places. And what he was saying here, he was saying that it's time that we become the aggressor. He was saying it's time that we will press in. It's time that we will take the battle to the enemy. Five times the word against was used here as warfare. He, get, he said against the wiles of the devil, against principalities, against powers, against rulers of darkness, against spiritual wickedness. And then Paul used the word stand. After you did all of that, you stand upon the word of God. You stand upon the promises of God. You stand upon what is true, friend. And then when you take a stand for righteousness, you are an opposing force to unrighteousness in this world that we live in. Listen to me now. Listen to me, child of God. This is a crucial year. When you take a stand for, amen, righteousness, you are opposing unrighteousness. And when you stand against abortion, when you stand yeah, against on. homosexuality, when you stand against same-sex marriage, you are in the press. Yeah. You are the aggressor. You are an enemy of evil. And you're saying Pushing back the darkness. 
When you thought about the prophet Elijah, he was proactive. He was met, he met the false prophets of Baal and the wicked king with force. Elijah was the one who issued the challenge. Elijah was the one who set the terms for the duel. David, when he met Goliath, David was the aggressor. He was the one who ran to meet the giant with five smooth stones. That giant came at him. He said, you come at me with a sword, a spear, amen, and a shield, but I come at you in the name of the Lord. He said, this day, my God. people is we live such passive and prayerless and passionless lives. I talked to you last week about passion, of living a passionate life, of being passionate. And I'm a passionate man. I'm passionate, aren't I, baby? <laughs> Amen. To be passionate. To love one another as Christ loved the church. To be that one, that man of God, that woman of God, amen, that will go forward. But we live such such passionless and wordless lives. We're afraid of what people might think. Can I tell you, I'm not afraid of what anybody might think about me. I'm not afraid, amen, what people might. I want them to think that I'm a blood-bought, born-again child of God, amen, that I'm that Bible. Thumping, devil chasing, Holy Ghost dancing, mountain moving. Oh, child of God. I want to I want to get worse. I want to get more vile. I want to be on fire for Jesus. I want to be, amen, that the fire of God will consume me. And amen, that people will come and watch me burn. So we are afraid, friends, so many times of what people might think. We're afraid to go to battle. We're afraid to stand up for evil. We're afraid that we can't win. But that's not the, that's not what my God says. My God said he's not giving us the spirit of fear, but of, of power, of love, of sound mind. I'm going to tell you in the name of Jesus Christ, you shall not be defeated. Amen. Since the Holy Ghost came in and made me power over sin, we shall not be defeated because the victory's already been won. The battle's not ours anyways. It's the Lord's. Amen. Amen. It's the Lord's. He holds the keys to death and hell unto your victory. And I'm here to tell you, friend, listen to me. My God loves you, and my God loves me so much that there is nothing. There is nothing, absolutely nothing, that shall separate us from the love of God. Not death, nor life, amen, nor angels, nor principalities, nor powers, nor present things, things that are present or things to come, nor height, nor depth, amen. Nothing shall separate us, nor create anything other uh, that shall separate us from the love of God, which is in Christ Jesus. Amen. Hallelujah. One of the greatest secrets to Paul's ministry was he, he was the aggressor. He was the one that pressed in. Hallelujah. I've got to close. We're going to experience, or if we're going to experience God's power. Now listen to me very closely. If we're going to experience God's power, if we're going to see the glory of God manifested, we've got to go on the offensive. We've got to take the fight to the enemy, friend. We've got to go, we've got to go deal with, amen, what is right is right and wrong is wrong. Right. We, we've got to live in the proactive. We've got to be the aggressor. I learned many years ago, and as most of you know, it, I've coached at the high school level and the middle school level. I'm coaching now in Pop Warner. My boys, I love coaching them. And I learned a long time ago when I first started coaching, I learned that, that in order for you to score, or in order for you to win, you've got to score. <laughs> you know, you never win unless you score. In order, in, in order for you to score, you got to be aggressive. Be aggressive. Be aggressive. you got to be aggressive, friend. you got to go in. you gotta, you got to bring the pressure upon the opposition. And in just in spiritual terms, when you begin to put pressure on the enemy. <laughs> now, I know this is a different type of message. Oh, come on now. When you begin to put pressure on the enemy. <laughs> Hallelujah. When you begin to take the fight to him. Yeah. What do you mean, Pastor? This is what I mean. When the enemy 
and you start seeing his head rise, and you know what I'm talking about. You'll see his head rise in your family. You just start looking in your spiritual eyes. When you start seeing his head rise, you go right to the source. You go right to the source. You get on your knees and you start praying. You start fasting. You get in your word and you start reading and declaring God's word over your life and over your family, friend. You take it to him, friend. Hallelujah. Listen, well, we, we have gone on so long living in the reactive. It's time to go to the proactive. When you begin to take the pressure to the enemy, when you learn to live aggressively, you will start to see a difference in your life. You'll start to see a difference in your spiritual school board, if you will. Hallelujah. I've got to close. Some of you, you have you your your school board is 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 just out of control. Your spiritual life, the enemy has scored so much on you, and you think that there's no way for you to ever come back. You think there's no hope and no way that the deficit is too large by all natural means and eyes and everything. the way it's looking, friend. You've lost your hope. You lost your joy. You've lost it all. But friend, I'm here to tell you, I bring you good news because my God doesn't act as in the natural as you might think. He acts in the supernatural and operates in the supernatural, friend. And if you will start living aggressively for him, if you will start doing everything you do as unto the Lord, Ecclesiastes 9, 10 says, whatever thy hand finds to do, do it with all of thy might. Be aggressive about it. For the devil hates aggressive Christians. Aggressive Christians prove that God's word is true. Do you believe that God's word is true? Yeah. Amen. Proactive Christians destroy the strongholds of the devil. And you don't, friend, you don't have to stop, friend. Listen, can I just be real with you? Can I just be real with you? We've allowed the enemy to come into our churches. It's kind of like, amen, what Clinton did and said one time. Amen. Great assembly of God, pastor and evangelist. He came and he said one time to us, he said, we've allowed the Trojan horse to come into the churches. And she showed up with lipstick and a miniskirt. <laughs> Hallelujah. We've allowed that thing to come in our churches and destroy what we know is true. We've allowed it to come in, amen, and cause us to go back to what the world thinks the church should be, friend. But we are not of the world. We are to be transformed, friend, in the renewing of all things of our mind and our body. Amen. Listen. <laughs> Hallelujah. Aggressive Christians prove that God's word is true. Proactive Christians destroy the many strongholds of the devil. And you do that. You do that by praying aggressively. You do that by praising aggressively. You do that by worshiping and loving and giving aggressively. You do that by living the Christian life aggressively. Be passionate about the things of God. And, pro and God will provide all the things that you need. We need to be proactive about his word in your life. Yes. Amen. Amen. Yes. Hallelujah. I'm going to close. <coughs> Paul said, I reach forth and those things which are before me. And I press toward the mark. For the prize of the high calling of God in Christ Jesus. I, 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 I've got to, you know, I've to kind of stepped out anyways. I'm just going to say it. There's an ideology that's come into the church. To all the denominations. There's a mentality that's coming to the church that says this. It says that we look at this Christian life as a big marathon race. And we look at it, and I meet them all the time, that they feel that if they sign up for the marathon, then they shall win. But that, that has never been the, the, the thought of God's Word. That's never been the, 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 the message of the Bible. The Bible is clearly that we must lay every weight aside that so easily besets us. That we must uh, uh, run that race before us. That the Bible tells us we should seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. The Bible tells us to put off the old man, the old things. And to put on the new in Christ Jesus. What does that mean? That means that you are not who you were. If you call yourself a child of God, then you're blood bought. You're born again. Those desires that you once had. They're not there anymore. They're not there. They're not there. Melissa and I, as we were gone last week, there were certain things that would have been okay 20, 30 years ago. But they're, they're not there anymore. 
They're not there. So we decided to just turn our backs from them and walk away. And God blessed. He blessed. He blessed. He says we are to put on the, the new in Christ Jesus. He says straight is the gate and narrow is the way which leads him to life. And he said that few are they that find it. Not many. Few. Those few are the ones that are aggressive. Those few are the ones that will press. Those few are the ones that will not let things hold them back as weights do. A weight is something that will keep you from your blessing. A weight is something that will keep you from eternal life with Jesus. A weight. Friend, listen to me. If you want to win this war, if you want to have victory in your life, it starts, amen, right here, right now, by standing to your feet, if you will. Will you stand to your feet this morning? Hallelujah. Today, I challenge you, I challenge you today to become proactive. Not reactive, but proactive. That you're going to take the fight to the enemy. You're going to take the fight to the enemy. You know what he has tried to do to you this week. You know the, the, the detours he's trying to cause you in your life. You know what he's trying to do to rob you of your joy, to rob you of your peace, to rob you of your family. Some of you have been under spiritual attack for a long time. The enemy has come in and he's tried to destroy your family. He's tried to destroy your children. He's come in to try to harm your finances. He's come in to try to do these things. And now we're all in this reactive mode. But friend, it's time we become proactive and we take the fight to him to regain the victory. Amen. Will you claim the victory with me this morning? Will you just begin to close your eyes?